Hey guys, welcome to the Square Circle Podcast. I am Marie Shadows, and on this episode of the Square Circle Podcast, I will be reviewing AEW Dynamite that debuted on May 6, 2020. This was a live show, and it was very, very fun from start to finish. I will say that there won't be a lot of ranting, like for my past two podcast episodes, and the only reason why I was ranting is because I know that AEW can do better. And I know that AEW can think outside the box and because AEW as a whole loves to use social media to their advantage, why not use it with these unknown talents that keep coming in week after week to have matches and make them stars? And that's just my opinion. That's just the way that it feels to me. It just feels like Cody Rhodes is going through the motions and just doing what he has to do. And there's nothing new behind it. There's no new spin on him being 100% babyface yet doing some heelish tactics. Or maybe those heelish tactics are just his way of projecting his determination and his ambition to be I am the ultimate baby face and this is why you need to believe in me, but it's not coming across as how it should. Now, textbook 101 baby face is that he loves the company so much. He protects the company. He goes out there every single time and he acts like a superhero, a superhero that will protect what he loves. And that also includes his wife. Yet we've seen from the past week that he used his wife as a shield when Darby was supposed to hit Cody Rhodes, but instead tackled Brandy in the process. So maybe a heelish move, a distraction, however you want to phrase it. But there's little seeds planted in here that maybe will have a Cody Rhodes heel turn and maybe things will be better. Cody Rhodes being a baby face does not really work great all the time he's great as a heel he's great as an obnoxious heel and it just works he knows how to get under your skin and obviously he had got it under mine so therefore he has done his job my problem with cody versus janela is that last week when tony shivani interviewed cody rhodes he was not taking his fight with lance archer seriously you are supposed to play it up as you're taking it seriously. You're doing everything in your power to get better, to study him, to know that if he pulls out an unorthodox move, you know how to counter it. But instead, Cody's answer is that he always wanted to fight Joey Janela. Joey Janela was always on his list. And this is the opportunity that he's going to have. And he took it. And yes and no. You can wrestle every guy at your training camp, but if all you're doing is wrestling, how is that going to help you take down a six foot giant monster that can walk the top rope and do a moonsault? How is any mat based training going to help you with that? Unless from the beginning of the match that you have with Archer coming up at double or nothing, if you attack his knees, attack his legs, and make sure to work on it for the majority of the match. Walking the top rope, doing a moonsault. I can see that not working. I can see a lot of Archer's big power moves not working because he needs his legs to do most of the moves. So if you take it out early, you might have a chance of winning. And that's where the logic of wrestling to wrestle works. But Lance Archer is probably not going to let you. Lance Archer is going to come out straight from the gate. He's going to use his power to take you out. He's going to do the pounce attack on you. 
he's going to do everything in his ability to not have you go after the, the legs because in his past, probably people have already done that. And he learned from his past. So that's what sort of bothered me. And baby faces, like, I'm probably thinking of like the old school baby faces. Hogan is a big example of being a baby face and doing things right and showing the people that he's training to beat his biggest heel opponent and that he's not taking it lightly. I think that's what I wanted to see from Cody, the type of big baby face that a Hogan would have, or Dusty is another example of being a baby face or even Ricky the Dragon Steamboat being a baby face, but it just doesn't come across as if like Lance Archer is a threat. And obviously Lance Archer has proved himself. This is why he's in the finals for double or nothing. And he is a threat. No matter what happens, he is a threat. Now, what I don't want to happen is. Because we're so focused on Cody being the baby face that he's using some heelish tactics through this journey. And then at the end result, after double or nothing, I don't want to see that switch. Lance Archer will not be great as a babyface. We know that. And if Lance Archer hears this little piece, he's probably going to be like, hell no. Back to why Cody versus Janela does not work to help Cody train and prepare for Lance Archer. While Janela is very unorthodox in his style of wrestling, meaning that he can probably go hold for hold with you and then he could do the hardcore stuff it doesn't match up to the power of lance archer and to the thinking ability of lance archer and obviously janela doesn't have a manager in his corner so cody can't really prepare for lance archer because lance archer has jake the snake roberts and jake the snake roberts is an excellent manager so like it just doesn't compare Just because Cody wanted this match with Janela, because sometimes in professional wrestling, dream matches don't tend to happen as much as we would like it. Whether it will be timing. Like we all wanted Undertaker versus Sting, but that got lost. You know, there's other matches out there that we wanted, but... It got lost due to whatever circumstances inconveniently came in and took it away. So I understand that Cody wants to fight Janela because it might just be the best time currently and not wait until after everything is done for that to happen. Imagine this. Imagine if... Cody does get the TNT championship. Janela could challenge him and then we could have a series off, you know? Abrupt endings and not letting it flow and see how long it can go. I'm not saying that Cody versus whoever should be 15 years long, but there's just certain things that didn't sit right. And I'm happy that this episode of Dynamite are bringing back some old feuds that Cody has so that way you could remember some stuff. I'll get to that a little bit later on. I would think that it would have been better. Cody, being the baby face that he is, would have challenged Sean Spears. And hopefully have Tully at the ringside. So that way... Cody could understand how to prepare for a situation like that where managers get involved and be ready for that. Now, you guys can make the argument of that, oh, he already knows he has this prolific career, and he does. I'm not taking his career away from him at all. It's just the details in professional wrestling matters. And if the details are not there, then what's the point? What's the point of having a match just to have a match because you don't take your biggest rivalry serious? Because you're like, oh, well, I'm Cody Rhodes. Oh, well, you know, he's just here in the company and I'm going to ignore him. If he wanted to ignore Lance Archer and Jake Roberts, paid attention to all the baiting that Jake Roberts has done or all the baiting that... 
Lance Archer has done by destroying the wrestlers in his path. Cody would have been like, well, you still got to work up. You got to come into the rankings or whatever the case may be. Cody should have been throwing him obstacles in a way of ignoring the fact that Lance Archer is in AEW and Cody is like, I'm not ready to fight you. I don't want to fight you. I don't think it's the best opportunity to happen. Like if he wanted to do that, that would have been fine. Cause then at the end result, when we finally get it, it will be a nice buildup of a suspension and it'll be a nice buildup of Lance Archer saying, look at all the guys that I've defeated in AEW. And you are the last person you are the centerpiece you are the person I want to take out and this is how it's going to happen. And then us as the fans will pop at the end and we'll have an awesome match that means something. I still think it's wrong that we're throwing in the TNC championship into this match as much as I would love the TNC championship to be added to the roster of championships in AEW. I just think that between these two guys doesn't really Cody's already established. Lance Archer is established. Both of these guys have great careers separately, but I understand that this is a TNT Network Championship title. And TNT had asked Cody to be in this tournament. But then again, Sammy, who's a rising star, the question. Sean Spears, another established star, but a rising star in AEW, making his own career there, is out of the question. It would have been full circle for Dustin to win the TNT Championship if he went to the finals to face his brother, and that would have been a really big thing. But then again, the idea and concept of this tournament obviously was rushed. And once again, I'm giving slack due to our current situation. But if you really think about it, they're not building any new stars. This is a title that will be held on TV every... Uh, maybe they could probably take it to AEW Dark that gets shown on YouTube because technically YouTube does TV. I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there. But just let that sink in for a moment that... This tournament is not building up any new stars. It's great. Like Cody Rhodes versus Lance Archer does not need a title. They're at the top of their game. Rising stars are the ones that need the championship. And being like, I'm champion. AEW is not... WWE and where that happens. WWE and where that happens. AEW is more the, okay, you're a champion. Go out there, cut a promo, bring us along for this journey and bring us along for your career. And let's have fun doing it. All right. So these are my notes. Janela was about to chop Cody. Cody does a full Nelson. Cody was about to do a full Nelson, but spins him out so that way he can have Janela into the crossroads. But. And that's where Cody hits his throat at. Why would you want to spin your opponent out of a full Nelson that you could have just done? Right. You do the full Nelson. The guy takes the bump. You bring up the guy and do a crossroads. Like, that would have been a cool combo to do only because when you do the Phil Nelson on your opponent, the air rushes out of his body. Thus, he could become a little bit dizzy when you bring him up and do the crossroads and you spin while doing the crossroads and hit that. But no, that doesn't happen. I don't know why that that sequence happened. That sequence happened that way. And for Janela to throw Cody into the ropes like that. Archer is a little bit taller than Cody. So, you know, if Cody happened to get Archer into a full Nelson, spit him out, and imagine if Archer throws him into the ropes. No, that's not going to happen that way. That's why this was not really a good matchup, even though Cody doesn't want to admit that this was for a warm-up Archer. Another place, Cody in a body scissors. Cody makes the pin by just to the mat. Uh, there's a lot of fighting back and forth. Cody and Janela are now fighting outside. Cody sidestep Janela's head start run. Does a moonsault to Janela. Cody does a bicycle kick. And then Janela does a super kick. 
Janela comes in with an elbow drop to Cody after pandering to the crowd at ringside. There is a reverse suplex from Cody to Janela. Top rope cutter by Cody. Janela then kicks out. And then finally, Cody Rose does a crossroads to Janela, and that ends the match. Cody goes into double or nothing on May 23rd with momentum on his side. Whoever wins, we're going to take it from there and see how the story develops. But again, let me just reiterate that no matter who gets the title, it might be a network title and it might be something that TNT was interested in doing for a long time, but never really did it with WCW, but now they have a new look on professional wrestling, so they want to do it with AEW. That's all great props to them, but TNT Championship does not make any new stars. It does not push Cody. What else can Cody do if he wins the title? What is Lance Archer going to do if he wins the title? He's going to be an unstoppable force no matter what, champion or not. Archer has such a destructive path that when you talk about him, he's going to be in the conversation of one of the great. Destroys people. And he, make, and he makes promises that he keeps and he says that everybody dies. But if he has a championship, what is that really going to do? He needs more the AEW World Heavyweight Championship because at least that will be solidifying him as the monster that he truly is. The murder hawk that he truly is. Cody giving up the right for him to win the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. At this point, the champion anymore. He made that stipulation when Jericho was champion. Now that Moxley is champion, Moxley is a very good guy. If he's a very good guy. If he wanted to fight Cody Rhodes, you know, he'll try to make it happen for the title. You know, he's champion he has some strengths to pull he could probably have cody rhodes go for the championship title okay so after that we get this amazing aew woman package promo that showed the short history of the aew women's division and how it's grown and aew is not shying away that we are in this Stop. and i'm grateful that aew and, and I'm wwe, are, that still AEW and on, WWE are still going on even if i am going on even if i am the companies and the company suggestions and on what could the companies and giving suggestions Suggestions on what could be done better for the shows as it goes on. But they showed a very good build and how we got Nyla Rose as our champion and all the rest of the contenders and how hungry they are and just a really great showing. And I was like, good job, guys. Next up, we have Nyla Rose versus Kenzie Page. Kenzie is new to the wrestling scene. She's only 18 years old. That is what they said on commentary. This wasn't really a match match. It was more of a squash match. And this is the definition of a squash match and a jobber. And I'm not talking about how I'm um, being the elite when Matt Hardy explained what a squash match or was. Um, I'm not talking about those rules. This match between Nyla and Kenzie is the epitome of what a jobber is supposed to do and what a squash match is supposed to do. So people on Twitter need to understand the difference between jobbers and, enha and enhancement talent. This was just straight up a squash match, not a squash match, not that much entertaining. So all I have is that Nyla did a swanton bomb and then she did a power bomb to Kenzie and then finally the beast bomb to pick up the win after that we get an mjf promo i am now completely sold on mjf blossomed and he is more of a heel now and it's just great to see what he comes up with next or what he says next and that promo of him was very very good after the mjf promo we get a sean spears promo sean spears is my pick for he has all the talent in the world he could tell a story and i know that he could be great in AEW. and for him to revisit his feud with cody rhodes is great i would bet that will do great for his career i'm tired of seeing sean spears act like the comedy man the i could take it easy lax person you know he has all the charisma in the world and i give it to him but i need a sick comedy man the
I need a serious Sean Spears. And showing what he got. Because it's not fair that WWE did not use him to his full potential. AEW will be able to use him to his full potential and stuff like that. So, great interview with Sean Spears. Hopefully, Sean Spears versus Cody will be part two. Then, how it ended in part one of their story. Now, we are back at ringside where Tony interviews MJF and Sean Spears is right by his side. And it will just be gold. It will be money. And I can't wait for that alliance to happen one way or another. They do have a common enemy. Their common enemy is MJF defeated Cody Rhodes in their story. While Sean Spears has yet to defeat Cody Rhodes in their story. So maybe MJF can lend Sean Spears some tips and tricks in order to defeat Cody Rhodes. Or just dig really deep down inside and become the heel that he needs to be. When he has Tully Blanchard at his side, he could definitely utilize Tully as a manager and definitely do some manager tactics because we're totally missing that in professional wrestling. The next match is Frankie Kazarian versus Moxley. There was a lot of chain wrestling involved and there was a balance between the chain wrestling and regular power wrestling. There was chops and punches and kicks. Frankie comes out and chops Moxley. Moxley absorbs the attacks. At that point, Moxie started to get an advantage. There was a lot of good offense. Moxie then flipped Frankie out to the ramp. Frankie hits his knee, and this is where we could have suggested that Frankie messed up his knee on the way down. But instead, Moxie and Frankie fighting on the outside. Mox Frankie does a DDT to Moxley. Then there's a release German suplex to Frankie. There's a backstabber from Frankie to Mox. Frankie with a submission hold. Mox uses his boot to kick Frankie to break free. There's a spear through the ropes and Frankie does a leg lariat down on Mox. Mox answers with his own counter and then does a paradigm shift. The way that I wrote my notes and the way that I read them back to you guys to tell you the play-by-play -play of this match is exactly how the balance was. It was sort of like being on a seesaw where it goes back and forth. Frankie will get a couple hits in. Moxley will find an opening, take advantage of it. He gets his move set in and then back and forth, back and forth. A little rest time will be maybe the chain wrestling and then switch it up with submissions and then switch it up to more kicks and punches. It was a who can one up who, who is the best man, and it was a great, beautiful story throughout. There's nothing that needed to be added. There's nothing that needed to be changed. These men are great in the ring. Frankie is really good as a singles wrestler. We know that. Moxley can handle anybody and everybody. Moxley is the wild card in AEW. Unfortunately, WWE didn't see that, but Moxley is the wild card of AEW and wrestling in general that don't like and there's certain matches that might be a little luck luckluster but in the end if you really sit down and watch the match you understand his character he he unveils his character with every match that he does and that's where his storytelling is great at. Besides his mic skills, after that we have the Dark Order coming out to attack Moxley and also attack SEU. SEU tries to help, but the numbers game is way too much until it is known that Brody Lee comes out. Brody Lee cuts his promo on Moxley, asks him for a... Brody Lee comes out. Brody Lee cuts his promo on Moxie, asks him for a championship match. He doesn't really ask him. He kind of tells him. And then Moxley, being all cool, is all like, all you had to do is just ask. And I just thought that was the definition of Moxley's character. And that was a great segment. After that, they beat him up again. Bam, that's it. Next up, we get a Brandy promo. She responds to Jake Roberts because over the past weeks, 
Jake Roberts has been baiting both her and Cody Rhodes to give him what he wants and to also give Lance Archer what he wants, which is just a simple match. But this has become a little bit more, a little bit more personal. And she was great in that promo. Talking from experience within the wrestling business and the and the textbook style one-on-one of what is going to happen if they confront Jake Roberts, all that was great storytelling. And that's what Brandy needs to do. Brandy needs to be that mouthpiece of Cody Rhodes when Cody Rhodes. After that, that we get QT Marshall versus manager. Lance Archer. And that promo again, was amazing. Why are we sacrificing QT Marshall? Can we I, again? Why are we sacrificing QT Marshall? Can we stop sacrificing the guy? I put in my notes that QT is a brave soul. QT does his, his handspring in Sigiri to Lance, which sort of rocks Lance a little bit. And then Lance is dominating most of the match, does the blackout, and then proceeds to do the everybody dies claw. He has momentum now going into double or nothing against Cody Rhodes. During this, during this match, on the outside... Britt was about to use her shoe to hit QT Marshall. Brandy didn't like it, took her shoe, threw it into the stands, and that caused Britt, after the match, to hop over the barricade, do a DDT to Brandy, roll her into the ring, and that's when Jake Roberts went to go get whichever number this snake is, which we Damien insert number here, and just tossed the snake on her. And then we'll go on top of her. And I don't remember if Jake Roberts ever did that to other people in his career. But, you know, if he has, just let me know. But that segment was uh, really great. Um, the snake is back. It was really cool. Jake Roberts is the type of wrestler to get you unsettled. So if you easily get unsettled, then please do not watch any segments with Jake the Snake Roberts. Hell, don't watch horror movies. Even if the horror movies, like, you know it's not real. What you see is what you get. And they're not going to change for you. And they're not going to change to have a WWE style company. So. Stop asking for it. Stop being offended and stop being so sensitive. They know what they're doing. They consented to it. If it didn't work, obviously it would have been changed. But because it worked, you know, remember that, guys. If it's not broken, don't fix it. It was a really good storytelling aspect. We didn't get Cody Rhodes coming out, being the champion that he is to protect his wife. So now, heading into next week, Now we come to the amazing, amazing main event of AEW Dynamite. Jericho and Sammy versus Kenny Omega and Matt Hardy. That match was great. They I have a little confrontation on the outside, outside, outside and that's about it. Matt they have Hardy a little confrontation on the outside, outside and that's about it. We're going to have to differentiate the two Matt, now. At the Hardy, start of this Matt Hardy or Damascus, we're going to have to differentiate the two now beating each other down matt hardy does the bt bomb to sammy which i don't know what that stands for matt hardy does the bt bomb to sammy which i don't know what that stands for there is the poetry in motion hardy-esque move with with kenny does the you can't escape from sammy but sammy gets up the knees when kenny comes down Jericho and Sammy then double team Omega because at this point the mask is Hardy is changing into regular 1999 Hardy, which I thought it was genius. No other wrestler has done that except like if you want to include Doink the Clown in uh, this conversation where he has multiple people playing him and he's not necessarily changing up his look, but he's having people come in and do clown heel stuff. Matt Hardy then does the side effect, which we're calling his moves by his moves. I don't care if WWE owns it or not, but Matt Hardy does the side effect. Kenny gets some offense in with a Snapdragon suplex. Then Jericho comes with a bat to Kenny. Sammy does a shooting star press, but then Kenny gets up the knees. Kenny does one V-trigger, and then 
Kenny brings out a table. There's also a ladder involved. Sammy is in the middle of the ring on top of the table. And Matt Hardy comes down from the ladder with a splash. Omega tries to splash the Hager, but then Hager face plants Kenny on the apron. Jericho proceeds to hit Matt with a bag of ice, and both Jericho and Hager put 1999 Hardy. Jericho and Hager put 1999 Hardy into the ice box. And yet again, this is where he changes. Spoiler alert. Wrestling magic, man. Kenny then hits Hagger and Jericho with a steel can. Sammy comes back into the fight and starts attacking on Kenny Omega. Sammy throws Kenny into an ATM machine and money comes out of it. Man, if I knew that's all you had to do to get money, I'll be throwing people into ATMs all day, every day, just so I could be rich. Kenny does a power bomb to Sammy onto the steel garage door. Jericho then pushes one of those boxes into Kenny. Jericho suplexes Kenny onto a steel barricade. I don't know why they do that, but that looked like a hurt. Matt Hardy comes out with a change of clothes, and now Matt Hardy has been transformed into Damascus. Damascus ends up getting a golf cart. This is a 2020 moment that AEW has produced. Matt first hits Jericho with the golf cart. Matt and Kenny as a duo. <laughs> Goes after Sammy, and Sammy gets ran over. And once again, Sammy is the Krillin of AEW, and he posed like Yamcha for that scene, and then he got wasted. Yeah, good times, man. Good times in 2020. So after everything, they put Jericho on the table. Kenny Omega takes the lift up and does a beautiful moonsault. A very smooth, beautiful moonsault from that lift. We thought that it was going to be over, but no. Santana and Ortiz come out to attack Kenny. Kenny was about to hit the one-winged angel on Jericho, but that didn't happen. Santana and Ortiz put Matt, or I should say Damascus, to a table. Matt Hardy being added to the AEW roster is the best thing that ever happened in professional wrestling. And I am glad that Matt Hardy is on the roster. I just can't get over the fact that he decided to change twice during the match and wrestling magic happened and the storytelling is phenomenal. It really is. For anyone out there that says that Matt Hardy does the same old things, Matt Hardy is the first of... Matt Hardy does a lot of first things and people just want to copy off of it, which... Copying off of it is a form of flattery, but no one can do it like Matt Hardy can. Um, I just can't get over the fact that he decided to change twice during the match and wrestling magic happened and the storytelling is phenomenal. It really is. All right, guys, that is my review of AEW Dynamite that happened on May 6th. Great show. Just some things to tighten up. But other than that, it felt like an AEW show. It felt like the alternative. And this is why I would tweet out and I was saying this podcast. I'm with AEW because I believe in them and I believe in their message and just having fun all around everything is good and if you guys enjoyed this episode please make sure to share it on your social medias please make sure to tag me in it you can follow me at at marie underscore shadows or at square circle pod if you guys want to sign up for the wrestling newsletter that i have that you'll be able to listen to this podcast there first please do so at squared circle podcast dot substack dot com i'm always available to talk to so if you guys want to hit me up on twitter you guys can most likely do that leave a comment on the wrestling newsletter all right guys i will see you guys in the next one